there's no denying that we live in a wild and beautiful world full of amazing natural phenomena. From rare cloud formations to unusual animal migrations, there really never is a dull moment. So join me as we take a look at 15 of the most unsettling natural phenomena. Number 15. Antarctica's Blood Falls Not all unique natural phenomena are created equal, and even the creepy ones can still be appreciated. Case in point with the Blood Falls. I mean, the name really does say it all. The Blood Falls is a waterfall that spurts blood red water into the river below, located in Antarctica. The first ever record of the Blood Falls was back in 1911 in the McMurdo Dry Valley, and one can only imagine how frightened those people must have been. Scientists originally believed that the Blood Falls were just a product of the red algae, but no one was ever able to prove that hypothesis. But science has come a long way since then, and so it wasn't until 2017 that the mystery of the Blood Falls was finally solved. Researchers at the University of Alaska Fairbanks discovered the true origin of this horror movie come to life. The red color is the result of the iron in the brine salt water oxidizing, which is the same reaction that causes rust. Yeah, but Rust Falls doesn't quite have the same ring to it as Blood Falls does, so I'm glad they kept the name. Number 14. Volcanic Lightning On its own, a volcanic eruption can be both a terrifying and mystifying experience, and is best viewed from a distance. But many eruptions are accompanied by a unique natural phenomenon known as volcanic lightning. Also known as a dirty thunderstorm, volcanic lightning is different from your average thunderstorm. Here, the lightning doesn't come down from the sky towards the Earth, but it would seem from the eruption itself. No one knows exactly why this happens, but many scientists believe that the rock fragments, ash, ice particles in the volcanic plume collide with one another and clash with the colder air, and the oppositely charged particles separate from each other. The charge distribution balances out, creating the lightning bolt. Think of it perhaps as the ultimate static shock. Only this one is much louder and far more destructive. And some of those bigger volcanic storms just might prove to be as powerful as the supercell thunderstorms that spawn tornadoes. Some of these volcanic lightning bolts and storms have been seen over eruptions in Japan, Iceland, and even Alaska. So if you ever get to see one up close and personal, there's a good chance you'll think the world is ending and that Ragnarok has begun. Number 13. Never-Ending Lightning the Catatumbo River runs from Colombia to Venezuela and experiences such intense forms of lightning that they decided to name the phenomenon after it. Also known as the Everlasting Storm, Catatumbo lightning happens when about 30 lightning bolts strike per minute, with a total of about 160 lightning storms a year, with each one lasting about 9 hours a day. Yeah, that's pretty intense. The Catatumbo lightning occurs specifically because of the river's proximity to the Andes Mountains that surround it. Heating and cooling patterns form, strong winds blow, and the air here is incredibly humid. The water from the river evaporates, and the wind moves the warm air towards the colder mountain air. Ice crystals form and come into contact with the humid water droplets, and then the light show begins. It's the perfect recipe for what some may call the perfect storm, and it can't happen anywhere else in the world, not like this at least. It's been going on for a while too, we're talking centuries. The Catatumbo River was once an important trade route and ships would use the heavy lightning storms as beacons in the distance. The energy emitted from the Catatumbo lightning is enough to power a hundred million light bulbs, and the heat generated is three times hotter than the surface of the sun. This is one storm you don't want to be stuck in. Number 12. Nebraska's Twin Tornadoes what could be possibly worse than witnessing or falling victim to a tornado? How about two tornadoes? Twin tornadoes don't come around very often, only every 10 to 15 years, but when they do form, it's usually a doozy. The original storm cell has to be incredibly violent for the second tornado to come into play, and it can go usually one of two ways. One funnel is so strong that it forms another and less powerful funnel, or as the first one is dying, a new one forms from it to finish the job. One of the first twin tornadoes on record happened in Austin, Texas in 1922, which caused nearly $1 million in damages. But in more recent years, meteorologists and storm chasers tracked a set of twins in Nebraska in 2014, and another one in Kansas just two years later. And while a twin tornado may be an unsettling weather phenomenon, the destruction it leaves behind is anything but. Thankfully, these twin tornadoes don't happen very often, but they are a very real and very scary reminder of what weather systems can do. Number 11. 
Gippsland Spiders If you suffer from arachnophobia, then it might be a good idea to look away. Residents of Gippsland in the state of Victoria, Australia, woke up to a pretty sinister eight-legged surprise one morning. The area was saturated with layers upon layers of cobwebs, all covered in spiders. The cause of this mass migration was the serious flooding in the area, and although the spiders were just simply trying to flee to higher and dry ground, that had to have been one freaky sight. The silky gossamers were formed on shrubs, trees, bushes, and anything that wasn't sitting directly on the ground. This arachnid phenomenon is known as ballooning, and spiders aren't the only creatures fleeing the high waters. Anything that lives underground came up to say hello, and since it's in Australia, you could be sure that plenty of snakes pop their heads up for a not-so-pleasant surprise. Number 10. Fire Tornadoes 2020 was a rough year for most of us, and for many living on the west coast of the United States, there were some serious wildfires on top of everything else. In August of that same year, residents of Loyalton, California were given their first ever fire tornado warning. But how is something that sounds like it's been ripped out of a science fiction movie able to exist? Well, a fire tornado is the byproduct of wildfires and wildfire conditions. When the heat becomes intense enough and mixes with turbulent winds and uneven terrain, a fire tornado is born. Currents of hot air rush upwards while the air pours in from the sides, causing horizontal winds. Once the fire tornado gathers up enough speed and strength, it'll create its own weather system. This vortex pulls in embers, ash, dirt, debris, and obviously flames. And when the winds can move up to 140 miles per hour, some of the contents can be hurled about. They can even form what's known as a pyrocumulonimbus and is essentially a fire cloud that causes hot thunderstorms above, literally adding fuel to the fire. Number 9. Deep Sea Gigantism don't believe your parents when they tell you that giants aren't real. And while you shouldn't expect to see some massive being dressed in a loincloth carrying a club lumbering around, if you dive a little deeper, you may just find what we're talking about, literally. Because deep sea gigantism is a very real thing that causes deep sea creatures to grow to ridiculous proportions. Things like giant isopods, Japanese spider crabs, giant oarfish, and the colossal squid all grow much larger than their shallow water counterparts. But because these creatures live in what's known as the abyssal habitat, getting down to those depths is nearly impossible, which makes studying the unsettling phenomenon even more difficult. But of course, there are plenty of theories behind these animals' size. For starters, many scientists believe that ice-cold temperatures encourage growth, a dramatic decrease in temperature at those abyssal depths can result in larger cell sizes, delayed sexual maturity, and an increased lifespan. So instead of undergoing a dramatic growth spurt like humans, the deep sea creatures experience slow, extended growth periods first. They also factor in the survival of the fittest, where larger animals who can survive at depth also pass down those big genes to their offspring. Another reason could be food scarcity. The typical rule in the animal kingdom is the larger the beast, the more efficient its metabolism is. So in the case of these deep sea creatures, something like a giant squid can go days, weeks, or months without eating because of its metabolic rate. The list can go on and on, but it's safe to say that when it comes to the deep dark reaches of the world's oceans, bigger always means better. Number 8. Aggressive Trees Okay, you'd think that with a name like the sandbox tree, this type of thing would be pretty harmless. Well, think again. This type of evergreen tree is a native resident to the tropical regions of both North and South America, and is especially prevalent in the humid Amazon rainforest. The sandbox tree is pretty hard to miss because of the hundreds of dark pointed spines jutting out of the smooth, deep brown bark. But there are so many spines and they're so ominous looking that the sandbox tree has earned the nickname Monkey No Climb. And if it's too scary for a monkey, then it's definitely too scary for even the bravest of tree climbing humans. And as if that wasn't enough, the sandbox tree's sap is incredibly caustic, harming anything that comes into contact with it. It's said that the tree's sap is similar to your common household drain cleaner, and it's even been used by fishermen to poison fish. Only that's one fillet of sole you may not want to dig into afterwards. But even the local tribes people reportedly use the sandbox tree sap on the tips of their arrows to make for a deadly combination. Even the fruit of the sandbox tree can kill you if you're not careful. The tree's seed pods are about the size of a large fist, and when they ripen, can actually explode. 
The dried fruit is sent flying everywhere and moves with so much force that it can wound any livestock or humans nearby. Number seven, bleeding plants. All right, this entry takes the cake. And if you couldn't tell by the name, this may not be one for the faint of heart. The bleeding tooth plant is a type of fungus that looks like it's straight out of a horror movie. But in reality, this unusual mushroom hails from the Pacific Northwest. The bleeding tooth plant earned its name from its pale white flesh with deep red pores that ooze out a thick red fluid. And for some crazy reason, if you do feel like getting up and close and personal with this scary fungus, if you turn it over, you'll find that the base is studded with small, mean-looking spines. But surprisingly, the bleeding tooth plant isn't dangerous and may have some health benefits for humans brave enough to consume them. And it's only the young ones that have the ghastly appearance. As they mature, they develop a more brown and shriveled appearance. The sanguine substance is a type of sap that's forced out of the fungus by an excess absorption of water. And oddly enough, you can find the bleeding tooth plant in different temperaments all over the world. And oddly enough, you can find the bleeding tooth plant in various areas all over the world, from North America to the Middle East, and even in parts of Korea. And luckily, they like to hide amongst the moss and the shadier parts of the forest. So the odds of you seeing one out in the open and getting scared are pretty slim. Number six, the Great Blue Hole. A massive sinkhole that's best viewed from above, the Great Blue Hole is exactly what it sounds like. It's a giant sinkhole over a thousand feet wide and over 400 feet deep in the middle of the ocean in Belize. It gets its deep blue color from its depth, which juxtaposed with the crystal clear waters around it, makes it look like the eye of an otherworldly beast that's been lying dormant for thousands of years just waiting to swallow unsuspecting swimmers whole. But the Great Blue Hole is part of the gorgeous Belize Barrier Reef and Mesoamerican Reef, so it's a huge hotspot for scuba divers. But with a hole that deep, who knows what sort of deep sea creatures are staring back at you? It's widely believed that the hole was formed way back in the Ice Age, when a submerged limestone cave system collapsed when the sea levels began to change. If you do manage to swim down into the depths of the Blue Hole, you'll find massive stalactites and stalagmites abound that help provide researchers with vital information about the climates of the past. So not only is the Great Blue Hole a once-in-a-lifetime diving spot, it's basically an underwater natural history museum. Number 5 the gate to hell. At the end of the day, no one really knows for sure if there's an afterlife, but to quote one of the great heavy metal bands Slayer, there is no heaven without a hell, and the gate to hell in Turkmenistan drives a pretty hard bargain. Located near the village of Deweze, the door to hell is a 230-foot hole that's been burning now for 40 years, and it's showing no signs of slowing down. But how does something like this happen? And is there a giant three-headed dog guarding it? Well, the answer to the first question is quite simple. The gate to hell was opened when the former Soviet Union was drilling in the Karakum Desert and accidentally came across a pocket of natural gas. A sinkhole happened, and then the rig collapsed, releasing noxious fumes into the air. But the drilling team set fire to the sinkhole to keep the gas from further releasing into the air and assumed that the fire would go out in just a few days. But you know what happens when you assume. Cut to 40 years later and this sinkhole is still going strong. There have been some efforts to put the fire out, but let's just say those plans have all turned to ash. While a bit unsettling, the gates of hell have become one of the country's most popular tourist destinations and offers a different type of oasis for hikers. Oh yeah, you could say this place is pretty lit. Number 4. Sea of Crabs Alright, the next entry on this list of unsettling natural phenomena is enough to make your skin crawl. The red crab migration happens once a year almost on cue, and when it happens, you better make sure you get the hell out of the way. It all goes down on Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean, where millions of the red crabs head to the oceans in hopes of finding a mate and getting lucky. But along the way, these little guys cover every inch of surface from trees to boulders and even roads. It gets to the point where the ground is replaced by a waving sea of red shapes all clamoring to get over each other with just one thing on their mind. The migration has become somewhat of an event, and if you can get a good and safe spot high up, you're more than welcome to watch them, because like a parade, the local municipality closes off the roads so they can move along safely. The local news even gives would-be spectators live updates of the crab's movements, so you'll know exactly where they are at all times. And while the idea of millions of crabs all moving to the ocean for the sake of love is nice, 
it makes for one of the most goosebump-inducing sights in the world. And to add to the creep factor a little bit, the time of the migration and the speed of the crabs are all determined by the phase of the moon. Number three, living stones. While they may not actually be alive, the rolling stones or sailing stones in Death Valley National Park certainly give the impression that they have a mind of their own. This deeply unsettling natural phenomenon is a wild one, to say the least. These sailing stones got their name because they move along the smooth floor of the valley without any human or animal intervention, leaving long trails behind them as proof. So I know you're asking, how can something like that happen? Well, especially since some of these rocks can be as heavy as 600 pounds. Are the rocks alive? Well, not quite. These valleys have large sheets of ice that break into a winter pond. Because of the blistering heat in the area on a sunny day, this thin ice floats at about 16 feet per minute by the winds, and as a result, the rocks move and leave their snail trail behind. What's even cooler about this event is that you'll notice some trails are in a straight line, while others may be a bit wavy. It's the smooth rocks that are able to turn this way, and while the rough-surfaced rocks move in a straight line. Number two. The Lake of Death. Swimming in a crystal clear blue lake is awesome, no doubt. But what about a pink lake? Well, you best stay as far away from that one as you can. But you've never heard of a pink lake before? Well, then you clearly haven't been to Lake Hillier in Australia. Australia is a continent full of all sorts of natural oddities, and so why should their lakes be any different, I guess? Lake Hillier is a bright bubblegum pink, and about 2,000 feet long and about 820 feet wide. But this odd body of water discovered over two centuries ago in 1802, to this day no one is totally sure how it got its unique color. But many biologists do agree that the bright pink hue of Lake Hillier's waters is due to an overabundance of a microalgae that produces carotenoids, which are also like pigments in carrots. Generally speaking, the best way to see this phenomenon that is Lake Hillier is by helicopter or by plane to give you a bird's eye view. But you can also get up close and personal if you want. The pink lake won't melt your skin, but has a salinity of 30%, which is quite high, and you can find salt deposits all along its shoreline. But this is not the type of water you want to drink, get in a cut, or worse, get in your eye. Youch. Number 1. Burst Your Bubble Who doesn't remember blowing bubbles as a kid, and all the simple joy it brought to us? Well, this unique natural phenomenon takes blowing bubbles to all new extremes. The frozen bubbles can be seen during the tough winters at Abraham Lake in Alberta, Canada, and look like thousands of bubbles trapped not just under the iced over surface, but in time. This phenomenon occurs when methane gases under the lake get trapped and freeze to create this otherworldly oddity. But because the bubbles are made of methane, they are as dangerous as they are beautiful. That much methane, even frozen and underwater, is highly flammable, and you don't have to get under the ice to cause an explosion. Even a lit match or lighter just in the area can cause a giant explosion. And if explosive lakes aren't enough, the methane gas under the lake is a sign of how much warmer the planet is becoming. So while the frozen bubbles of Abraham Lake look spectacular, it's not something we really want to see. Eventually, the ice will begin to melt in the spring, causing the bubbles to burst naturally and make for one stinky lake. Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.